Hey everyone, I just hit 2,000 subscribers! That's right, almost everyone on YouTube is now subscribed to my channel. Wow, the frame, it's going to my head! And since I'm so famous now, I thought I would do one of those AMAs. And so I asked folks on Twitter and, of course, on my Patreon. But seriously, you should you should go be a patron. It's, it's cool. To ask me anything. Are we all are we all getting a good idea of why I normally script my videos? Cause this is going great. Good thing I don't have like a whole improv D and D one shot thing that I've done. That would. Uh. All right, let's just jump right into it. Got a bunch of questions from my friends over at the Double DM Podcast. Thanks. Favorite pizza topping combo? That's gonna be uh, kind of a toss up between, I'm gonna say sausage, mushroom, and olive, or chicken jalapeno and pineapple. That's right, mother effers. I put pineapple on pizza, go ahead, unsubscribe. Favorite color? Uh, gray. Uh, no, it's just, it's a very calming color, but it's also like a cool color. I don't know, I just, I, I like gray. Favorite dinosaur? Uh, I don't know. This one. Favorite number? Uh, 42. That's a, that's a good number. All right, let's jump over to some, uh, some questions from my pal Derek over at DMDM DM Studios. Hey, I, I do a thing, I do, I do a thing on, on DMDM DM Studios Twitch channel. Probably coming back up pretty soon. Guess go check that out. What boxes does a game have to tick in order for you to recommend it to someone else? Um, if I'm going to recommend a game to someone, it's more about knowing that the game ticks boxes that I think would interest them. Like, the only times I really recommend games to someone are when I either know them and what they like, and so I think like, hey, this would be a game you'd be really, really interested in. Like, I know you like magical girl anime and Utna like I do, and so play Thirsty Sword Lesbians. It's really cool for that. Or if I see people like complaining about certain system mechanics or wishing that a system had certain mechanics and I know that another game does have them, then I might be like, hey, Next, do you prefer games with specific lore or games that are lore agnostic to the degree that it encourages you to make your own? This one I can say I definitely prefer uh, games that encourage me to uh, make my own lore and setting. And even the games that come with their own specific lore and setting, I will often just make my own because, I don't know, I got into DMing because I like making worlds. I started running D&D &D back 20 years ago, and even at that point, I didn't want to run it in Forgotten Realms or anything like that. I just, I wanted to make up my own world, and D&D &D gave me rules to do so, so. Here's a little message from Telepri, Telepri, Spencer. What message do you think you five years from now left for you five years ago when he did will travel back to him? I think that message would be, keep at it, you're doing great, and also look out for the blue truck. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Hey, hey, got a message from David from Reckless Attack. Love their podcast. What's a video or project that you're really proud of and why? Oh, the little smiley face with some hearts. Aw, oh, David, I'll give you some smiley face hearts too. If it's for this channel, I would say it is just literally all of the how to play videos because they have been Pretty monumental feats to put together and a lot of effort, and I'm really glad that they've come together, and I'm glad that I feel like I'm getting better at them. But also, a video project that I'm really proud of would be uh, on another channel that I do stuff on with my very good friend John uh, over on Mojo Menace, the Kenneth Crispy videos, where I try and make Rice Krispie treats out of different cereals, and I'm just really happy how much those still make me laugh when I go back and watch them. I get tired of my own content 
fairly quick usually, but uh, those ones still amuse me a lot, and I think they're just really funny and wacky, and I've got a lot more planned that I want to do. Alright, one from my pal, Dungeon Matter. Aw oh, man, we, we've got an actual play that I swear I'm gonna get uploaded. I just, I've had multiple problems uploading it, and then I put it on the back burner because it frustrates me, but it's going to get up here, it was so cool. What is the strongest emotional response you've had as a player? Like, what made your blood boil, or you terrified, or uncontrollably sad? Um... <laughs> <laughs> the only response that comes to me isn't, like, something so emotional for my character that I got mad. I guess I can't think of anything right off the top of my head, aside from something that made me mad as a person because of how stupid it was. But many years ago, I was a player in a D&D game, and, oh, we were probably, like, five or six sessions in at least. And we had been trying to figure out how to go forward for like a solid hour and a half. And the DM was just not giving us any good advice or anything. He wasn't... Every lead that we checked was just like, huh, nope. <laughs> and it's like, all right, we don't know exactly what you want us to do. Could you please help us a bit? And finally, the one bit of help that he seemed to offer was like someone... Some character had, like, this path that would lead us to where we thought the big bad evil guy might be. And so we are like, oh hey, we've been searching for an hour and a half, bored out of our minds, we finally found this lead, so we followed it, but we weren't supposed to apparently, and we were just immediately killed. We got TPK'd within, like, two rounds. It was... There was no possible way we were going to win. This is back in this is back in D&D uh, 3.5, &D by the way. But I, I don't actually think that matters. But yeah, he wiped us, and then he's like, Meh, end of campaign. <laughs> and he thought it was just so amusing. And he's like, oh, you, you should have known better. It's some of the worst DMing that I have ever experienced. And we were all quite unhappy, and I was pretty mad about that. It was just kind of a shitty thing to do. I gotta swore again. I don't swear in these videos much. Well, I guess it's here. Whatever. This isn't educational. This is ask me anything, hear anything. Bad words. Poo poo caca. All right. Let's get a couple questions from my friend, and I hope yours. I've done some work with him. It's Bards and Brews. Uh, Alex does amazing stuff. We did a big charity stream together that was absolutely fantastic, and Alex makes so much great content. Go check it out, please. Anyway, time to uh, uh, questions. What is your favorite alcoholic drink? It would be a PD Isla Scotch. Uh, I could drink that every single day and never be unhappy with it. Gotta be PD. Gotta be smoky. I, I gotta feel like I'm drinking a campfire. There's something so satisfying about that where it's like, ooh, I drink this and I feel like I'm smoking a cigar and in an old leather jacket sitting in a wood shop. I don't know. I just, I, I really like it. What is the best class ever made, and why is it bards? Ooh, I'm checking with the judges here. No, I'm afraid it's the human fighter with the champion. So who who took these results? No, bards are pretty amazing. Though actually, I might have. If I'm gonna play D and D, I might actually almost like more a arcane trickster rogue who's actually more focused on charisma than dexterity. Uh, I got a con artist character who is that and it just makes me the happiest i don't know i think it's a really fun combo but bards are great especially you what would be your last meal Ooh. i mean it's just gotta be a big old new york style pizza what do you think a gelatinous cube tastes like okay this is actually something i've had a discussion with uh way back in my 20s uh and i've never forgotten uh, what we decided upon, or maybe what I decided upon, uh, but I, I remember being insistent that a gelatinous cube would taste like very acrid, very sour Mountain Dew. Probably mostly because I hate Mountain Dew. Alright, we got a question from, ah, oh, my pal, Souls Rolls. Oh my gosh, go check out his stuff. He does so many things. Just go on his Twitter and look at all the cool stuff he does. He's amazing. What type of games do you struggle most with explaining? 
I would say that I struggle most with explaining games that are crunchy with really, like, definite rules and math. Just because, I mean, you would think it'd almost be easier because there's so much more structure to it, but usually there's, like, so many different steps and so many different stats and all this kind of stuff. Whereas compared to some of these more fluid narrative games, it's always just, like, descriptive words and you don't need to know specific terms as much. But, like, D&D, if I'm just like, okay, so you're gonna attack... When you roll your attack, you roll a d20 plus your strength or dexterity modifier, depending on uh, what kind of weapon it is, finesse or not, along with your proficiency bonus, assuming that your class is proficient with it. You then compare the total number against the enemy's AC, and, and I mean, for we for those of us who play D&D, we can definitely follow all that, but if I'm explaining a system in a way that someone who doesn't know it at all then I'm throwing around a lot of terms that they're having to try and remember from me mentioning them before. And so when I'm explaining them in my videos, I can use a lot of graphics, but a lot of time, even when I'm just writing out the script, I really have to think about how much text and how much I'm as asking people to remember. My Cortex Prime video, I think, is still very difficult if you haven't read through the book at least once and have a decent grasp of all the terms, because sometimes there's a lot of crap on the screen and I don't feel like it was the most successful, but uh, people seem to like it. But yeah, I would say that's definitely what I struggle with the the most. Ah, uh, from my friend RP, he's, he's the person who made that Fari VTT that I made a video about that you should really all be using. Which video was the most fun to record? I mean, any of the actual plays that I've done. It's always the most fun when I get to just play a game and I'm not like reading a big long script. Like the scripts are fun and I have fun with this stuff. I'm having fun right now. This is great. I'm <laughs> shooting from the hip and recording way too much crap that I wanted it to be like a five minute video and here I go. But uh, uh, yeah, no, any of the actual play stuff, the one I did with you and with uh, Dungeon Matter uh, running it and uh, AK Triple and, uh, and uh, D Deserted GM, Chris, I did a little game with him. He's amazing. Um, th yeah, those kind of things are definitely the most fun because I get to play with friends. So they're just a blast. And finally, I grouped all these questions kind of together because they're all about the same. Um, I first got it from Targus on my Patreon. Thank you so much, Targus. You're a champion! Uh, Targus asks, what have been some of your favorite moments in gaming over the years? Uh, whereas also I've got Double DM Podcasts. Uh, they asked, what is a story while playing TTRPGs that you will always hold dear in your heart? Uh, One Int Wizard... Uh, over on Twitter, who is an awesome person to follow as well, asked, what is your proudest GMing moment, either for yourself or your players? And good old Dungeon Matter asked, what is your all-time favorite memory from a TTRPG game? I figured these all kind of grouped together. I will say some of my favorite moments came in my last big D&D &D game that ran for about a year and a half. I loved it at the beginning because I did private session zeros with all the players, where each of them got to know the same NPC without knowing they all knew the same one. And in the first session, when we all actually got together and they all slowly started to realize that was a character bringing them together, and then they thought that NPC had died and a number of them actually cried because it was kind of emotional. And But then they found out the character wasn't dead and they were all brought together with a desire to save this character. That was very satisfying to have drawn them all in that much and done that good of a job from the start. I've not always been as successful as bringing players together, but I feel like it was definitely a high point in GMing for me. And then the end of that campaign was a blast. Um, I had massive moments. The characters were in a plane of concept fighting against a god that embodied hate while they themselves were brought together by a goddess of hope and uh, lifelines were cut, and they all ended up having, like, one shared health pool with the Goddess of Hope keeping them alive and having this massive epic battle at 20th level where, like, every melee hit was max damage, every spell was 9th level. Um, it got just ridiculous, and 
Like there were callbacks to NPCs that they had been joking about for 20 sessions without me ever really responding because the NPC was not ever supposed to come back. But there were screams when that NPC reappeared. Uh, there were moving moments. There were multiple points throughout the whole last session where people were in tears and moved. I was in tears. It was such a huge moving thing and it felt so satisfying in the end. I get that I should say that world is one that I designed like years before that campaign and always wanted to run and finally getting it up and running and having people connect with it was amazing and connecting with my players and having an awesome satisfying finale like it was all really really amazing and I couldn't have done it without that group of just awesome friends so that's definitely the standout. That's the answer that all of you get. You don't get four separate answers. Y'all, your questions were too similar. And that's it. That's all the questions that I think I got. And hey, if you're watching here on YouTube and you're like, I didn't know about this. I, I wasn't, I don't, I don't know. I guess I could have made a community post, but I just thought of that right now. Whoops. <laughs> and you know, let's just, keep exploring awesome new games together and i've got a whole ton of stuff planned for this year it's overwhelming and gives me a lot of anxiety but by golly i'm gonna make it happen because i've really been enjoying doing this i know 2000 is not like a monumental feat as far as youtube is concerned in fact it's not even the most subscribers that i personally have had on a youtube channel but especially for doing something that i'm just so genuinely passionate about and not something like I feel will be the next catchy video. I just, I do videos on stuff that I really actually like and some of them do well, some of them not so much, but whatever, I still have fun with it. So I, I don't care, I'm having a good time. Uh, follow my Twitch, I'm gonna start streaming stuff. I have plans to run a whole bunch of Thirsty Sword Lesbians in February. So I got some amazing people uh, lined up to be in that. People way more amazing than I have any right to be GMing, but it's cool. It's gonna happen. And I got some awesome videos coming up with, uh, hopefully pretty soon with, uh, Randy from the Fate SRD. So we're gonna have some cool Fate videos. Otherwise, uh, it's very, very hot in my booth. <laughs> I, I am sweating profusely. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I don't have a good outro. Bye. You're all great.